today. The repo market explained, and at the moment, it's more relevant than ever. We're going to show you how the repo market works, why it has been so active lately, and why it's an integral part of the Fed's toolbox to fight inflation. But most importantly, you're going to see how the repo market can be used as a custom gauge of inflation in a way most probably have just not considered. The term repo market is widely used, seldomly understood, but it's actually quite simple. An overnight reverse repurchase agreement, RRP, or more commonly known as repo market. It's a transaction conducted by the Fed to sell securities with an agreement to repurchase them at a later date. The purpose is simple, to drain reserves from the banking system. The Federal Reserve sells fixed income securities in order to create the following ripple effects to the overall economy, to reduce the money supply, basically to take cash out of the financial system, raise interest rates, specifically short-term borrowing costs used by companies, and of course, the ultimate goal, control inflation. Now, with that said, there are a wide variety of tools that the Fed uses for several reasons. But to keep things simple, today we're going to focus on the Fed's massive amount of selling and they're more relevant than ever. And in just a moment, you're going to see why. In 2021, the Fed embarked on a campaign of selling fixed income securities such as treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities, which we can see accelerated through the next few years. Let's consider the mechanics of exactly how this works. The Fed sells fixed income securities such as U.S. Treasuries to the banking system and in return receives as payment massive amounts of cash. The additional number of treasuries now in the market drive down prices simply as a result of more supply than demand. As prices decline, bond yields naturally rise. It's easy to think about this as follows. With a greater number of bonds in the marketplace, the bond market has to naturally offer a higher yield in order to attract investment capital. The effects are very clear. Notice, as the Fed increased their sales of fixed income securities, the 30-year mortgage rates increased as well. Rising from a 317 in March of 2021 to a lofty 7.08% yield in October of 22. Of course, mortgage rates also rose as a result of the inflation cycle that we've all had to endure. But in addition to hiking interest rates, the sale of Treasury securities in the open market was conducted to try to slow down the runaway prices. These sales in the repo market actually have a much stronger effect on short-term bonds, such as a one-year U.S. Treasury. During the same period of time, the one-year U.S. Treasury yield rose from only 8 basis points to an incredible 4.75%. Imagine, for a moment, the increased operating costs for all sorts of businesses that borrow capital for short-term funding. These higher rates are intended to slow growth and ultimately curb the massive inflationary pressures. Fast forward to present date. The Federal Reserve achieved their peaks in bond sales in early 23 and since then has begun to taper their sales. And the opposite effect logically transpired in the bond market. After touching highs of 5.49% in October of 23, the one-year U.S. Treasury yield declined to a 465 in January of this year. But wait, something here doesn't quite make sense. From January until present, the one-year bond yield has actually started to rise again, despite the Fed tapering in their sales in the repo market. Something doesn't add up. I'll ask all of you, how is it possible that bond yields started to rise despite the Fed selling less Treasury securities? Let's pause for a moment to ponder the question. The answer will make perfect sense. The answer is inflation. We've seen a resurgence in inflation starting around the beginning of the year. That sticky inflation that just doesn't seem to want to go away has helped drive up bond yields even as the Fed has tapered their bond sales. We have several ways to prove this theory. In blue, the Fed funds futures predicting the odds the Federal Reserve will not cut interest rates in their May meeting. Notice, around the same period of time, the one-year U.S. Treasury yield began to soar. The Fed Fund's futures also rose in similar fashion. 
The chart is telling us very simply, as inflationary forces returned, the odds of a Fed cut disappeared. We can also consider the Consumer Price Index, a popular measure of inflation. The last two reports show a steady rise despite our current high interest rate environment. The return of inflation is also evident in producer prices. These economic reports such as CPI and PPI take on a new meaning now that we can see the evidence in the repo market. Here, illustrated by the one-year U.S. Treasury bond yield diverging from the taper in the repo market. So why is this all important? What's the benefit in recognizing the correlation between the repo market and treasury yields? And why is it so important to make note of a break in the relationship? The study of economics provides us with insight to the true state of the economy. Every data set gives us a better chance of spotting the next trend, finding the next great trade, ensuring we're on the right side of the market. A great example of this is the growing divergence between the surging e-commerce sector and gasoline sales. This break in the data found in our latest retail sales report is actually quite telling and speaks to a growing disparity within our economy. Here, we take you through the figures and show you why this is so important. 